Welcome to Body and Soul. So, 2020 is known as the stay home year, right? And I'm sure a lot of us have picked up hobbies and interests like jigsaw puzzles, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But some of us were more active and took the chance to learn martial arts activities like Krav Maga, Jiu Jitsu, Taekwondo. But with such activities comes a higher risk of injuries. That's right. Injuries that result from martial arts are actually very common. And these injuries include muscle sprains and strains, abrasions, ligament tears, and dislocation of joints and fractures. And over time, if untreated, they might become recurring injuries. Hmm. So take note, for those who have picked up martial arts as a hobby or who are professionals, this episode's for you. Absolutely. Injuries can occur. In fact, let me share with you one common injury arising from this. Let's take a look. The hamstring is a group of muscles at the back of the thigh that runs from behind the knee to the base of the buttock. And hamstring strains are common in workouts or activities that require fast bursts of speed. Pain is often felt at the back of the thigh when there is a tear in the muscle fiber. There are three grades of severity, with grade one being the least severe to grade three, where there is full rupture of the muscle. To treat a hamstring strain, rest, apply ice, use a compression bandage, and elevate the leg to reduce swelling. So injuries that result from intensive activities like martial arts have two categories, acute and overuse. Let me explain the acute injuries first. Acute injuries result from a single traumatic event. For example, the handspring strain that we just talked about, wrist fractures, ankle sprains, or shoulder dislocation. On the other hand, we have overuse injuries, which result from minor trauma in the soft tissue, and they could happen over time with repeated usage of that body part. And they might not seem serious at first, but if not treated, they usually get worse. Hmm, okay, like the rotator cuff injury. So hmm. when you repeat the same action, like punching in martial arts, you could actually get an injury. Exactly, and symptoms are swelling in the shoulder, pain when you lift your arm, or when you reach behind your back. Ow, okay. <laughs> but what are some other factors that might increase the risk of injury? Training errors, like increasing your intensity of your workout too quickly, or after injury, when you push yourself during the workout to try to make up for lost time, mm. and improper technique as well as using the wrong equipment. So what happens when there are athletes who need to continue to train despite being injured? Is there anything we can do about that? Well, we sent Kelly Latimer to find out more. Let's take a look. I used to be an avid runner, but then I got an injury and I had to stop for quite some time. To the point where even after I had recovered, I just couldn't get back into running. And building up the stamina was just so hard, but I had the option to stop. What if you're a professional athlete though? What if you get injured and have to continue with training? Can you? That's the question we're about to answer. Let's find out. Okay, Dr. Teo, diving straight in. If an athlete has an injury, say in their knee or their ankle, can they still train? In my opinion, injury can fall into three spectrum. The red zone is that the stress factor that requires you to completely off the exercise and seek treatment. The other extreme spectrum will be the green spectrum, which you get aches and sore, and which lasts for one to two days, and you can get back to training, and that's not a problem. But for yellow zone, that which is most often that the injury fall within this spectrum, this is the part that um, if you continue training too much, you can fall into the red spectrum or if you rest enough, you can go into the green spectrum and you can continue training and to improve your performance. Singapore Sport and Exercise Medicine Centre at CGH, we have this multidisciplinary approach to help the athletes into this program. So it sounds like you guys have a lot of tips and tricks up your sleeve. What are some of the tools that you guys use? One of the way that we can help the athletes is by using the anti-gravity treadmill. So for this machine, the athletes need a special pants to wear. Then they get into the treadmill and they need to zip it up to seal the whole pressure. Once it's all done up, the machine will automatically calibrate the body weight. So for example, an athlete of 70 kg, we can set a 50% of their body weight, then they essentially running or doing exercise at about 35 kg of their body weight. From there, we can gradually increase either the body weight percentage or we can increase the speed. And we can also manipulate the inclination to help them to adopt 
do a different running terrain. Once they can fully absorb their full body weight, we can move them to a normal treadmill and a video gait analysis can be performed. And can you tell me a little bit more about the video gait analysis? The video gait analysis is using a camera to capture the person running from the shoulder all the way to the toe. From there, we're using a software to actually analyse the movement. So the movement we can analyse from the arm, the hip, the knee or the ankle. So for example, if we can identify that the knee is internally rotated, the supporting leg hip is at an angle, but the non-supporting leg, the hip is dropping below the supporting leg, then we know that this is a hip drop. So this signifies that the external rotator's muscle is not working properly. So from there, we can give them some exercise to strengthen it and to give them some um, movement to actually help them to correct the action. So aside from professional athletes, who else could benefit from these tools? So for, for other group of patients, people with weight issues, um, it's managed by a multidisciplinary team to set them a goal. So anti-gravity treadmill is one of the equipment that we could put the patient into it to let them feel how is it like at their normal way to do running, to do their exercises in the treadmill. So then what about the video gait analysis? Who could benefit from that? So in video gait analysis, it's not only for serious runner. The amateur runner can benefit from that to identify the inefficient running gait, which is cause the waste of energy, or we can identify the risk of getting injury. So that is the way that we can help the, the amateur runners to improve their running to prevent injury. So I guess all these tools, not just for the professional athletes, but even for everybody else as well. Dr. Teo, thank you so much for sharing. So now you know if you're an injured athlete who wishes to continue training, you can. Coupled with the anti-gravity treadmill, as well as the video gate analysis and the guidance of sports physicians, you will be back on track in no time. And that is your health takeaway. We're going out for a break now, but we'll be back to meet our celebrity guests. See you soon. Welcome back to Body and Soul, the health show that helps you take charge of your health. It's time to meet our celebrity guests who will be joining us today. Meet Faka Fuzz, stand-up comedian and TV personality. He recently took up jiu-jitsu and is here on Body and Soul to learn how he can avoid injuries from martial arts. This is Grace Teo, stunt artist and actress. She's here on Body and Soul to share her story. And thank you so much for joining us, Grace and Faz. Hi. Welcome to Body and Soul. So, Faz, tell mm -hmm. us, you are into martial arts. What's your experience been like so far? Yes, uh, I've been doing um, Muay Thai for four years and competitive Jiu-Jitsu for about close to two years now. Mm. And it's uh, it's really fun because um, I get to learn a lot about my body and learn a lot about like uh, movements that I've never got to incorporate in normal life also, you know, things to do with my hips, my legs and all that. And of course, with that also, some injuries come into play when, when you know, when uh, I, I execute them wrongly. Yeah. So what injuries have you had actually? Um, I've had a lot of uh, weird sensations in my knee, <laughs> right? I can't really specifically say what it is, right? But it's just weird, um, you know, when you get it in, in different, like, I guess, weird angles. Okay, mm -hmm. I say weird a lot, right? <laughs> it happens when you have a limited vocabulary. Okay, so... And also sometimes with my arm, when I get into an armbar position and I guess I can't defend it uh, early, you know, when it's cranked, I do feel kind of like a hyperextension that is uh, accompanied by some pain. Right. Okay, okay, our doctor can understand. Yes, 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 can, can, can. In fact, in fact we have a video of Faz doing jiu-jitsu. So let's take a look and you can yes. commentate what's going on here. Okay. Okay, so what is happening right now, he's trying to pass my legs to get to my hips. And that's called passing guard. But then he falls into this position called the close guard where my legs are around him and I'm controlling him with my thighs by pulling him close and trying to get his right arm across uh, so that I can go into an armbar. But he is trying to use my lapel 
uh, to choke me, which doesn't work because he doesn't have enough leverage. So that leg that went across just now, I was trying to sweep him to my right. So basically, yeah. you are in the dominant position at this I'm point. I'm in a dominant position ah. because like, I can control him with my thighs and my, wow. my, 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 uh, my grips and mm -hmm. by pulling him close, whereas he doesn't really have much unless he passes my legs. So, my goodness. So, yeah. It's so technical. I've been lost halfway. Like, okay, I got yeah. it. <laughs> now, Grace, you are an actress and a stunt artist. Wow. Can you tell us some of the injuries that you've encountered? Um, the most <laughs> intensive one would de definitely be my lower back, mm -hmm. my neck, um, knees and ankle. Personally, mm. so I always get injuries. I mean, stun men, yeah. stun people always get injuries <coughs> everywhere. Mm. Much exactly. artists as well. Yeah. Exactly. So what's happening with your spine? I heard you have a couple of problems with your spine as well. Also, during one of the shoots, um, I actually did um, got a slip disc oh. uh, just like on my neck, C3 and my L5 spine. My yes. So I, I got whiplash um, from doing this wire work, slamming mm -hmm. to the wall, and then... But first, let's take a look at uh, some of the stunt work that Grace actually has done. What okay, movie so was this? So this is like some fancy superhero moves. You don't really see in the modern uh, days. Yeah. Yes. Cool. That is so cool. You're the one in white, right? Yeah. Yes, correct. Oh. Yeah, and this is an amba, like what right. you, you were sharing earlier. This is the famous move you always see females do on the villains uh, when they're trying to like take over and kick their butt. Yeah. Yes, so that's and those so are very cool. fancy moves. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if it's effective in real life. What do you think? <laughs> well, I think can. Right? Maybe? I think can. Right? You have to be fast enough. And what are we seeing here? Yeah. And me being slammed to the table and fall off. And this was when? When were so you doing this? So this? this is actually from a movie called Siu Lap, an abusive, more oh. gory kind of movie. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so the stunts that we do here is very different from what we do usually in the Did fighting. Did you really hit the, the, the chair? No, I, I just sold it. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. You see, that's, that's how you know you're good, because I believed it, right? Right. Mm. And, uh, you know, I guess, Dr. Chang, when it comes to their kind of uh, hobbies and their work, right. they actually are... Um, uh, I think, prone to injuries, perhaps. It could actually happen. Uh, yeah. But you took this up, what, six years ago in total? Uh, yeah, I yeah. took Muay Thai for four years and Jiu-Jitsu for close to two years. Right, yeah. so any advice for people who want to take up things like this? Yeah, so both of you have gone through a lot. <laughs> and you can see that from they were able to transition from one martial art to the next mm -hmm. and without problems. But for somebody who's just starting out, you really need, need to take time to build up your strength and your endurance because you're going through all these very complex techniques. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not for the somebody who's starting out, you better to spend some time and get yes, well get your strength going. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Otherwise you're just gonna like, Ugh. now, yeah. you know, even with professional work as well, as professionals, you do get injuries as well. You were telling us about that uh, slamming against the wall of the wire work, and we actually have a picture of you right after that incident. <laughs> oh. Hi. oh my yeah. god. Wow, yes. the, you have. I hope you send the invoice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was in shirt. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. So when did this happen? Um, about two, three years ago. And exactly what happened with the wire work? Everything requires wire work. Always a teamwork. So we always have to be ready. But you know, sometimes you, nothing can always be so shirt off. Mm -hmm. So mm. what happened was um, my teammate. They had to pull me, but of, of course I have to be ready. Mm -hmm. And then, but sometimes it's just because of the the rehearsal that we did. I was like, oh, okay, this is too slow. Could we actually up the beat and then? But again, mm -hmm. we are not machine, so from we can we can't be so um, accurate Precise, from one yeah. to fifty mm -hmm. yeah. percent. That's the kind. So it's something like a easier to put it in a way. It's like one to one hundred. Mm -hmm. So it, it was like a very quick slam. Yes. And yeah. yeah. It See. went zero to 100 real quick. Yes. Yeah. So, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Lack of vocab. <laughs> Sometimes so can stuck one in my head. Yeah. <laughs> so that means they pulled wire really hard, your, your head snapped forward, and then you had to bang against the wall as well. Yes. So whiplash and bang is, oh my goodness. Okay. Oh, that didn't look okay. fun, man. That looked painful. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like you were in pain, you know? Were you like unconscious or were you like in pain? I was in pain and I was like vision blur. Oh, mm. wow. Yes. Okay. It's so interesting getting insight into your lives. Thank you so much, guys. Now, we're going to go for a break right now, but coming up soon, we'll be getting our questions answered by an expert. So think about this. How does one detect damaged muscles on an ultrasound scan? You'll find out soon.
Welcome back to Body and Soul. It's now time for our doctor's demo. Joining me, of course, are Faz and Grace. Hi, guys. Hi. And also, Senior Staff Registrar, Department of Sport and Exercise Medicine from Changi General Hospital, Dr. Ng Chung Sien. Welcome, Dr. Ng. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, because today you are going to do two demonstrations first. And the first will be a scan of Grace's wrist. I believe you've had injuries before, right? Yes. Okay, yes. so all yours, Dr. Ng. Grace has got some pain on the outer part of the elbow. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use uh, the ultrasound machine to evaluate her wrist and see what we can find. Okay, right. so it's an ultrasound machine. Uh, we won't need the scalpel, everybody. So, yes, put the scalpel away. We're good. We're good. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> So let's begin. So I'm going to get you to put your wrist in this position. And uh, what we're trying to see is that there is a tendon over the outer part of the wrist that is commonly injured. And uh, this tendon is the tendon that flexes the wrist. Mm -hmm. And with repeated movements during stunts and martial arts, this can get swollen. For sure. So what we have seen so far is that it's not too bad. There is a bit of mild swelling. All right, mm. and I'm uh, going to turn the probe in this direction to get a better view. Mm. So typically, what do the shadows tell us? Uh, in terms of injury, uh, the dark areas tend to highlight areas that are injured. Mm -hmm. Specifically, in this case, the tendon, it may show, it may, the dark areas will indicate swelling. Mm -hmm. So what we can see in Grace's tendon here, the ECU tendon, there's no tear, but there's a bit of swelling. Okay. So I think she will do well with simple ice rest and monitoring it over the next few weeks. Nice. Wonderful. Right. Okay, punch less, slightly less. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so You're much. Welcome. Uh, I do believe that you have images of a particular scan as well, of an injured tendon as well. Yes. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so here we have two images on the ultrasound. One on the left is that of the right elbow. And specifically what we're looking at is the extensor tendon of the elbow, which connects to the bone over here. And that's called the lateral epicondyle. A lot of patients have pain over here, and typically this is what you call tennis elbow. Ah. And here in this image, what you can see is that there's a bit of swelling on the tendon at the insertion at the bone, and that is represented those areas, like what we mentioned, the dark areas. The image on the right is actually an image of the foot showing a structure called the plantar fascia, and uh, a lot of patients actually come to see us because of heel pain. Mm -hmm. And in this instance, a lot of them actually have swelling of the plantar fascia. So the ultrasound over here can nicely pick up that swelling. So you can see the swelling is about zero point, it's about six millimeters. Normal thickness is about less than four. Wow. And in a lot of runners and people who do, do impact activities on the heel when they present with this condition, this ultrasound can nicely illustrate the injury. Wonderful. Well, yeah. thank you very much. All right, our next demo will be with Faz. Now, Ooh. we did an earlier scan of Faz's elbow. Yes. <laughs> You've had slight injuries on both elbows. So, yeah. right now, it's time to uh, give Faz some therapy, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not for really it? looking forward to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to this. Okay, so, so what kind of machine is this? Okay, this is a shock wave machine, and uh, typically, typically it delivers a pulse energy wave. Mm. to treat overuse injuries. And in this case, uh, Faz has a bit of pain over the external elbow. Yes. Mm. And it's kind of like a, a bit of a tennis elbow. So what we're going to do today is going to mm. apply the shockwave treatment on the injured area. Okay. All right. So first thing first, uh, how do you feel, Faz? Um, anxious. anxious. <laughs> that's a great, that's, okay, so I'm Terrifying. going to get you to put the, rest your okay. elbows on the pillow. And uh, okay. what we're going to do is going to start with a low level of energy. Oh, and it's better be low. <laughs> it's better be low. <laughs> and uh, we're going to apply the shockwave okay, exactly okay. on the area of pain. Sure. Uh, if at any point you feel that it is too painful and mm. you wish to stop, mm. please let us know. Or okay. just scream. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. Right. Just kidding. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Not so bad. Oh, hey. Not too bad. Not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> so is it? <laughs> Okay. Is it ticklish or is it painful? Okay. I can't tell okay. from your reaction. Uh, yeah. Okay, it's a bit of both. Ah, it's okay. I got used to it. Ah, yeah. it's yeah. good. I'm used to it. What ah. was the sensation like? It's a uh, discomfort, uh, but it's uh, it's also a little bit ticklish at the same time. Mm. Yeah, it does feel like your muscle in this portion is being shocked. Right. Repeatedly. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. you know what? You were very brave. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, I think I was brave too. <laughs> <laughs> and now we have a question from Sophie Golifer from Class 25. Let's have a look. 
My question is this, can an old sports injury come back to bite you? Way back in my youth, many, many, many years ago, I used to play contact rugby and I sustained an injury to the knee, a fractured tibia, which at the time was so painful. Years on, can this still come back and cause me pain while exercising? Yes, uh, well, the answer is yes, it is possible. We know that traumatic injuries to the knees can lead to arthritis over many years. And uh, this may typically present with pain and swelling with running and jumping activities. So my advice to her is that if she experienced any of these symptoms, to get it checked with the doctors. And uh, sometimes they may do x-rays or MRI scans to further evaluate the nature of the injury. And we can take it from there depending on the findings. Thank you so much, Dr. Ng. You've been amazing. Thank you so much for the demonstrations. Thank you, Grace, and thank, thank you, Faz, for being thank amazing you. guests thank as you. well. Thank <laughs> you. Well, I'm glad that we talked about this today. More and more people are taking up these activities like martial arts, and we need to be aware of the risks and injuries that could result from this. So if you need to take away three things from today, remember, injuries from intensive activities like martial arts fall into two categories, acute and overuse. And if you're just recovered, Take it slow and don't overtrain yourself. Detection and treatment like the ultrasound scan and shockwave therapy are available, so definitely seek professional help if your injury is serious. Fair enough. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Chang. Yeah. And if you want to learn more about your body and health today, you can catch more Body and Soul on MeWatch.sg, both this season and previous ones. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you again soon. Bye.